All right. So continuing with the digital coloring. Most of the shapes are contained, but then there are some kind of elaborations with the line art that are part of a single flat local color. So the cowl of this death mask, I was thinking would be pretty dark, like a black. But I don't want to fill it in with black because then I lose my, my line art. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my my line art layer, which I've called black bread. I'm going to select it with the magic wand with contiguous. Then I'm going to move to my flat color layer. Everything's locked except my flat color layer. And I'm going to drop in a color. But what color? Let's see. I don't want black. I could do dark blue. I could do kind of a grayish blue. I could do kind of a greenish grayish blue. That might be nice. Remember, as long as we fill them in, we can change them later just for our flat color. And now when I drop that in, I want to be able to see the black lines. Oh, I'm still on the eyedropper. Whoops. So I got to go to the paint bucket and then drop it in. So this way I can still see the lines. But later on, I might want to adjust that because there are more there are other types of coloring that I'm going to be using on top of my flat color. So this is just the base tone I want to use. And maybe I decide, oh, that's not the color I want. I like the idea of keeping that kind of uh, hidden heart shape a reddish tone. So maybe I want something that's more like a wine tone. Whoops, I just painted my swatch. <laughs> so go to the eyedropper. And in Photoshop, you're able to hold down Option with the Paint Bucket tool and change it to the eyedropper. But it looks like in PhotoP that that doesn't work. So it only works with the Paintbrush tool. But I'm just going to... I keep making that same mistake. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to steal this color. It's in my foreground color box. Now I'm going to use the Paint Bucket tool and drop it in. And that will work for now. But I'll add other variations to it later. Now inside the, the openings of the skull, I think I want that kind of dark greenish blue. So I go to my black line layer. I use the magic wand. I can hold down shift and select multiple shapes at once. Maybe I'll do it on the inside of the eye of the mask as well. Anywhere else I want something pretty dark. Maybe here. Maybe here. Oh, no. All right, and then I go to my flat color layer. You can see the selections. I'm going to take the eyedropper, steel, Let's do this color and then use my paint bucket, drop them in. And then these ones didn't get filled in because they're surrounded by another color. So I have to click on those while they're still selected. See, we want to keep our black line separate from our color. And then hit Command-D to deselect. And it's looking playing card-ish. It's looking, it doesn't look like a tattoo quite yet, but I'm going to show you in some of the ways we texture and finish off the color. Even if it's just flat color, how that can work. Now, the one place that the flat color just doesn't work really well is on this cowl, right? It just looks washed out and too dark. So that's going to be something I do with duotone color. But at any time, I can 
now that I've filled it in with at least one selection, I could choose something else at any time and very easily just use the paint bucket to change it. So I'll go with that for now. And then if I like that color, maybe I want to use it somewhere else. Or maybe leave it unique. You know, but maybe I'll use it right here. So you're just finding a way to uh, build a, a color in for every, every contained shape. Everything behind your line art. Now, I'm going to encourage you not to use white, right? I can steal color from myself, like that skull color, and then I can paint that for the skull on the bottom, now that I've done all this line art. So you can think of skulls as being white, but if I use them as just solid white, then that really limits the opportunity for coloring. So instead, I'm using off-whites. And then for the teeth, I want it to be even brighter than the bone. So what can I use for that? Well, you see these different kind of cream colors that are often in palettes. And I think I like that one. It looks like it's bright white, but it's not. It's, it has a little bit more to it. It's a warm off-white. So choosing colors is a lot like you know going to a paint store to paint your, your living room and all the different subtle variations and what are called chromatic grays that you can choose from. All of the successful colors for most digital coloring are just colorful grays. Because if you try to color with full saturation colors, they end up just looking fluorescent and strange. But the beauty of it there we go, slight off-white. And you can see that now it's filled in. I gotta fill in those teeth at the bottom. And if I really zoom in, maybe I even wanna dirty that white up a little bit more. But if I take real white by going to the defaults, and painting that on, yeah, it's too close to, to perfect white. So what I'm gonna do is steal it, find it on the color selector, and muddy it a little bit. And now use that. Because I encourage you not to use perfect white. Unless that's part of your design choice. Because white and black are actually not colors. I'm going to select these teeth now. Fill those in with that very slight kind of grayish blue off-white. Go to my tattoo reference. I haven't looked at this for a while. It's got lots of patterns. Notice that this is very simple in terms of color. It just has black ink and then red, yellow, or I guess red, orange, and cyan. Those are its only colors. So you don't need to have tons of colors for it to be successful and interesting. But I also can use a lot more than a tattoo gun because it's really easy for me to select colors. I don't have to load a gun with new this is a good kind of shadow value for the skin that I might use in Duotone, but for now I can use it to fill in the um, that contained shape on the hand. 
And once I have it somewhere in my image, then I can always just use the eyedropper and steal it later. All right. So are there any other colors I want to make sure I use? I like the, uh, well, I want something really bright for that star. Not white, but a really kind of warm white. So this one. Then I'm gonna drop it in. I have to select it first. It's a pain doing all the selections and kind of moving between, but then once they're all filled in, then you can just work on your coloring layers alone. So now that's done. Do I want that anywhere else? I think that might be nice. Let's see how bright is it? That's ah, pretty bright. I think that might be nice in here. So you can see how much time it saves me to have contained shapes to use. So just contain them wherever possible. And they'll all fill in anywhere else. Oh yeah, the petals of this, I think that would be nice. But there are lots of shapes. And then the idea of local color. What is the, the color that the thing actually is? Like the blade of a knife. You get to choose. I'm going to do kind of the cool gray, like a blue steel kind of thing. And I can always modify it slightly. If I think that's a little too dark, I can just move it on the color picker a little bit. But by stealing from a palette, it gives me a start. Now, of course, because that's an open line, it's going to fill both these sections, right? Because I have that opening there. And that's just to show you the difference between containing and not containing your shapes. Okay, now because that's a contained shape and this is a contained shape, I can actually fill that with the slightly darker version of that color, even in just flat color. And it will still just be flat color because they are contained shapes. And that gives the metal just a little bit more presence than like the bone of the skull, which looks pretty dull and flat. His little lock of hair here, I guess that's his hairline. I guess that could be the skin color, but it's an opportunity where I can maybe do that shadow tone again. So it's just choosing the colors, filling them in. And unfortunately, the more complex your illustration is, the more shapes there are to fill. But I'm almost there. So I have to fill in a few more. Let's do some green for the stalk of the flower. <clears throat> 